Everything else is, uh, is set up. So sorry about that, guys. All right, so uh, welcome back uh, to another Easel Live. My name is Brandon, the community and training manager here at Inventables. Um, we are going to be making a fun sign for you guys today. Uh, let me throw it up for you. Hopefully, we're not going to have any audio issues. Uh, yeah, I think this is working. Okay, cool. So we're going to be making um, this sign today. And... Um, <clears throat> I think I mentioned last week that we would be jumping into my shop, but again, uh, it's probably going to be next week. There's a couple things I need to get kind of rigged up. So all of this setup is working. But um, let us know where you guys are coming in from. I'm going to throw some folks up on the screen. Uh, let me get through all the comments where you guys tell me I was on mute, which that's going to be an ongoing thing, I think, apparently. But all right, so we got, I think, a lot of international folks today. So we got, uh, let's see... Um, Erich Nast from South Africa. Uh, we have got Nelson uh, Oliveria from Portugal. What is up? And we got Martin from West Yorkshire. And we've got Papa, who also just made a St. Patrick's Day sign. Papa, if you have a picture of that, uh, drop that in the comments. I'd love to check it out. We got Nelson also from Portugal. Um, we've got, let's see, Cameron from Salisbury. Cameron, I think you've been on before, if I remember right. We got GC Tierra coming in from Orlando. And a lot of you telling me that my sound was off. Uh, okay, we've got a couple more folks. We got, let's see, uh, Jim DeHart from Wisconsin. Mike from Philadelphia. Gary from Ontario. Borstrom, or Borstom, I'm sorry, man, from Denmark. And we got Joe from Wisconsin. Uh, this is cool. I think this is the uh, the most international folks that we've had on um, for one of these streams. Um, just in general, um, I guess all of you guys are here. Uh, and also, I was just throwing out the comments from YouTube, but we're also streaming to Facebook. So um, uh, those folks on Facebook, I see you. We got uh, Sassafras Green from Pennsylvania. Uh, let's see. We've got Mario from Utah, Stephen from New Mexico. Uh, I cannot pronounce your name, I'm sorry, uh, but from Bulgaria, we got Tommy from Chicago and Brian from Wichita, Kansas. Um, but since you guys are live with this, I am guessing this time works for you. I'm East Coast, and so kind of the idea was I was trying to hit kind of the lunch break um, for most of the folks in the States, although if you guys are in California, this is probably pretty early. But um, if you guys are around the world, just let me know, is this time good? Is this bad? We always want to um, probably stay a consistent time, but also do one that can work for the rest of you guys. Uh, and let's see, I'll just throw this out because we've got Terry from Augusta, Georgia, and I am also from Georgia, a little bit north of you in Athens. So um, guys, we're going to get started here in just one second. Uh, let me cough and hopefully not mute myself like I've done before. And it should come back. Cool. So I actually have a mute switch. So um, sweet. So we are going to be jumping into uh, Easel. If you guys uh, don't have an account, there's actually something pretty new uh, where you can just sign up for a free 30-day uh, trial uh, to jump in and see everything that it has to offer. As we are going along, if you just do at Inventables um, and if you have a specific question, I'll make sure and be reading through the comments and try to get back to those um, as we go. But let me switch over. So hopefully you guys can see my screen. Everything is a pretty good size, I'm guessing. Uh, and so you guys can see over here on the left, um, this is kind of what we're, we're, we're making, except it's going to be a two-part cut because we also want to do a design. And I actually, I, I think I just saw a version of this, this, this design online. And so I pretty much just tried to make a, a version of it. And so uh, using all stuff that's built directly into easel. So um, in the comments, or not in the comments, in the description of YouTube or in the uh, the post on Facebook, you guys should have a link that will take you to this file. When you open it, it's not going to look like this. Uh, the top is going to be, I think it's blue, like a lightish blue, if I remember right. Uh, you'll need to basically clone it to make your own version. But um, as we are going in the save, depending on when you open it, this could look a little bit different because what we're going to do is if you guys haven't seen easel before um, these workspaces uh, on the bottom you can add as many as you want and um, we're going to be adding in a couple and kind of going through the full design process so that is what we are doing today uh guys good to go everything's still working audio still coming through yes cool and we also have i'm gonna throw this out bob from northern michigan okay clear that 
All right, guys. So uh, all of this is um, stuff you can get inside of Easel. So um, the fonts are all Easel fonts. Um, this is from the Pro Design Library, as well as these. Now, this is actually something I didn't even realize was in there. I want to show you guys. But um, with a lot of like CNC, here, let's just do a Google search. Um, CNC um, wooden signs. Uh, I can't spell. There's those flourishes you'll see a lot. Like uh, I just saw one a second ago. Uh, well, you can't really see it, but kind of right there, um, especially like an Etsy. Those will uh, show up a good bit, and so um, you can actually pull some of those inside of Easel. So that's what I wanted to uh, get with you guys. So. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in. So if you're looking at a blank project or if you're looking at this project, what we're gonna do down here is uh, do a new work piece. This might be uh, collapsed. So there's just a little carrot that you can click and you can open up a new work piece. Also, um, if you guys are not inside the United States, yours is probably metric, um, which probably makes more sense just in general. But if you guys are in the US, uh, I'm gonna keep mine on inches just because I can visualize that quicker. All right, so we're gonna start a new work piece. And um, kind of the way I started this design is we did uh, pretty much this first, uh, then I kind of centered everything, went back and created this outline. So this is actually a profile. Um, and so that's what the sign's actually going to look like. So all these pieces are going to be cut out. And then um, this is engraved into it. But actually the order of operations for cutting would be, um, it's actually, this is actually going to be three different um, passes. So you're going to have a, uh, a clearing pass, which for this setup, it was just an eighth inch bit. Um, some of these are a little bit bigger, um, like this clover. And then it comes back and does a detail bit. So that's how we're getting uh, the V carve, especially with uh, most of like these designs, you're probably not gonna be able to get uh, much of that coming out because of uh, even if you did like a 30 second inch 30 one thirty second of a size of a bit uh, it's too small so you're gonna have to do a vcar bit and then the last one is you will actually cut out the entire piece you do this last uh, because even if you're you're using tabs um, or if you're using um, like the double stick tape method where you're um, gluing super gluing between double stick tape which is attached to the bottom and then the bed of your work piece um, you typically if you're going to cut something out that's going to be the very last thing that you do just in case something moves um, you're you can just remove the whole thing and you'll be good so that's typically the process that we'll go through but the design process is kind of the reverse of that so all right um let's get in and also randy i just saw from redwater alberta canada what's up okay so oh also i'd love to know in the chat is saint is it is saint patrick's day is that something that's like the United States just makes a big deal of like Cinco de Mayo. That's not really a big deal anywhere else. Or do you guys like, especially the European folks, is that something that's like everywhere? I don't know. Okay. So let's start off with the fonts. Um, I'm coming over here to the text. Sorry, I'm going to have to move my microphone a little bit. Um, and I think I forgot what font I used. Let's see. This is, if you guys didn't know, you can actually adjust uh, your fonts after you make them. So if you go over to the shape menu, um, and then you can adjust your font right here. So I was just trying to figure out which one I used, which is the DM serif display. Now you probably don't have that one. And so on Easel Pro, um, you can add uh, any of those fonts. And so uh, actually, I think I typed it in like a Irish. And then I looked through the, uh, the serif ones and I found the DM, well, sorry, my computer's being weird, the DM one. But I've already got installed, so let's go ahead and select it. And so we got luck. And then um, of these, a different font and then Irish is separate. So I'm hitting um, Command C and Command V. And actually next time I'm going to get something that will uh, show my keystrokes, if that's helpful for you guys. But I will try to say them um, as I'm doing them as well. But um, all of like the copy paste, uh, delete, combine, all of that is going to be in your edit menu. So if you guys didn't know, cut, copy, paste, remove, flip, horizontal, and vertical. And then like the layering stuff um, is all right here. And then all of like the alignment stuff, if you just click and drag, you get that purple box. And then you can uh, align stuff right there. So, uh, okay, cool. We got luck and Irish. And then the other one was, let's see, uh, Norican. I think that's how you say that. Norican, which is right here. 
So we got of uh, the cool. And uh, what's good about uh, just the fonts in general is uh, it's, they're pretty easy to size. So some design software, you have to resize text by actually changing like the font size, like the point size, like 12, 13, 14, which can get pretty annoying. Um, but this, you just literally click and drag, um, which is super helpful. I'm hitting uh, command Z on a Mac to edit out of that. But also if you click and drag, you can um, resize a group, even if they're not grouped together. Sorry, I'm going to cough again. And, um, yeah, so you can do that. And that's something that's pretty helpful um, as you are going. And we'll get into all the alignment stuff here in just a second. And actually, today's might be pretty quick. So there will uh, will not be much. All right, I'm actually looking at the chat. So we got, so Bob is saying, uh, I'm guessing you're talking about St. Patrick's. It's a reason to drink beer. That's true. Uh, cool. All right, so um, the next thing is we are going to add in the uh, the leprechaun design. So the actual leprechaun head. Um, and I just went into the pro design library and I typed in leprechaun, which now you guys are gonna see how bad I spell. Is that right? Yes, okay. Uh, and I was searching through, this is the one I went with, but um, if you guys have not used the pro design library before, uh, we've got tons and tons, like thousands and thousands of designs. So, I mean, you can pretty much search for anything and you're going to find something. So, um, cool. So I selected this guy. Then um, once you've got your pro design, you can bring it in a couple different ways. Uh, you can bring it in as a, actually this one is set up a little bit different. Let me, let me show you a different one so you can kind of see, uh, do one that's actually filled in. Okay. So if I selected this, I guess this is like a pipe, like a Y pipe, um, you could do a fill. So it's going to cut out everything that's dark or you can do an outline. And so uh, if we actually brought this in and we double clicked it and when you double click something that is going to um, bring up the editing points, like if it's like the, the vectors, so you could actually adjust this. Um, so you can see all of those in there, but um, you can also bring it in where it's just the lines. And so either you can do that from the Pro Design menu, or you can do that from the cut settings. So if you have all that selected, and then you can do cut on shape of the path. And so it does that as well. Now, the the library that these are pulling from, um, they are the way they are, oh, sorry, I can't talk and type leprechaun. The way they are uh, uploaded is they may be different. So you can see like if you wanted to do a fill on this, you actually would probably need to edit some of the design to get there. But like if you just wanted um, like a silhouette of the leprechaun, you um, would need to adjust this. But I believe, no, you don't. Okay. It is all put together as one outline. So, um, this one, instead of having the lines be uh, like just a single line, this artwork, the lines are actually, they actually have the thickness already in them. So unlike, um, like if you did something like this, where there's no thickness to that line, the only way you define that thickness is by the width of your bit. And so if I took off the 60 degree bit, you can see if I made this thicker, so if I take that to a quarter, that's going to get bigger. But and I think we, we talked about this, I forget when um, someone was asking, but if you wanted to have a thin line, but you wanted to have a defined thickness, you would actually do a square. So um, if you double click in, you can see you've got this four points. So all of that to say is if you double click into this, there are points whoa, um, on either side. So this isn't just a single line and that's just the way the designer made it. So um, if you did want to do it as a complete fill, um, you'd have to bring it in a little bit different or, or kind of work with it a little bit different. But in our case, this is actually exactly what we want. So um, hopefully that makes sense. I'm checking the, the comments real quick. If you guys got any questions, uh, let's see, Bob. Uh, also Gary says, good here. Okay, good. Um, and then Bob Hale, got to say, like in the new design library, use it often. Bob, let me know what um, what type of de designs are you making? I'd love to check it out. Okay, so we now are just going to resize this. And so uh, sometimes when you bring in the pro designs, again, let me try to find one that maybe it will do it. 
they're not combined together. So maybe this one's going to do it. Let's see. Nope, it is. So sometimes you, you'll bring them in and just like how these are separate, this bubble may not be attached to the whole design. Um, and if that was the case, you would just need to make sure you clicked and dragged the whole thing. And then you can always combine designs. If you select like two things, well, the text is going to be a little weird. And then if you right click it, uh, let me add something else in. If you wanted to have these together, you could right click and hit combine. Uh, and that's kind of like uh, the group command uh, in other vector editing software. Um, but uh, we've talked about this before. This is also destructive. So if you combine these two together, you're not going to be able to revert that. So we always suggest if before you do a combine, um, either make a new workpiece and then do, 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 do the combine there because then you can always go back to your original. Um, or you could just make a copy, like copy and paste, and just pull that off um, so you have it to work with. Okay, that's a lot to say, just bring in the leprechaun head. Um, okay, and now we're going to make this a little bit bigger. And again, we'll get into all the sizing uh, getting stuff lined up here in a second. Also, I'm going to switch my bits back over. This might look a little bit different to you guys. Um, I don't think you guys see the red. I think this is something that's on my account. But basically, uh, what you probably are seeing is nothing. And that is because if you were following along, this right now is a quarter inch bit, which um, this is not going to cut out. It's too thick. So we have this to an eighth. And then even with that, um, you can see we're not going to be able to cut everything. And so that is why we hit this plus button right here. And so this is a two-stage uh, cut. Sorry, coughing again. And um, if you hit this, you can add an additional bit. It's going to assume when this is a detail bit. And so I think it will it will use your last bit, I believe, the last one you've selected. So the 60 degree was already set in there. And now you can see there is nothing red, or in your case, um, everything is going to be able to be cut out. Also, you may not have a detailed preview. Um, you can click right. Oh, uh, let me turn. You guys can't see this. Uh, let me turn this off. Um, right here, there's a, a detailed preview. And so that might be a an active button that you can click, and then you're able um, to be able to see everything. Ooh, let me flip this back. Okay. So... Next up, we got luck of the Irish. Okay, so now we're adding in some clovers. Uh, also, check in the comments real quick. Um, some people are saying they do. Some people are saying they don't. So uh, let's see. Carmen DeLuca, I've never seen red in the visual display on the right. Yeah, so that might be uh, that might be a beta feature. I'm not sure. Which, if you guys didn't know, and let me make sure I'm saying this right. If you go, where do you get your account settings? If you go um, up, I believe this is here. Yeah, okay. So if you go, uh, just click on this pro icon or it might just be just a normal easel um, icon at the top. I'm sorry, let me clear that comment. Um, then if you come over to options, I think uh, most of you guys will see this. So you can opt in or opt out to beta testing. So there's some features that are in um, like a live beta um, just for all users. And so I just didn't remember if that was one. But that might be why you guys don't see red. Um, but it does sound like, let's see, uh, Bob Hurdle on Facebook, he's saying he does see the red. Um, and then Papa saying you might have a different version. Okay, um, cool. So yeah, like I said, if you guys got questions, uh, let me know as we are going. Next up is we're going to add in uh, the clovers. And so uh, these up top, uh, and this is actually that what I meant by the generate the preview. Let me turn this off again. Um, you guys can see this is kind of a fuzzy version. So now if you hit the generate, this is back on the uh, like the original workpiece. Now we got a, a nice one. Um, but you guys can see these clovers up top and these clovers down below are actually the same. So uh, we're gonna go back into here. I think I just I just typed in clover. And I want to say I just use this one, maybe. We'll say we're going to use this one. And so um, I actually brought this in two different ways. So I did one just as the fill and then one as the outline. But like I said, you don't have to bring it in exactly the way you want it. You can still change it up in the cut menu. So 
Um, we'll actually do that. So we're going to do the first clover. Uh, I'm going to scale it down. And I am actually going to bring this. I'm going to make this smaller. Just hopefully I can zoom in a little bit more. And hopefully it's bigger for you guys, depending on how big your screen is. So, uh, yeah, so we had this guy. And then I... Um, I wanted basically the mirror image of that. So I hit um, Command C, Command V, or Control C, Control V on a PC. <clears throat> I'm right clicking it and then flip horizontal. Um, if you guys haven't done it, stuff in other design software, you usually are going to have these type options uh, somewhere. So you can flip it and you can see the uh, that white arrow is the what it is currently, and the dark one is what it's going to. So you can see you're flipping it in this direction but you can also flip it if we we'll make a full square um, you can also flip it in if i did both of these right clicked and then flip in the vertical uh well i didn't copy them but anyway yeah so they're, they'll flip upside down okay so we got those two now let me talk about uh what i meant by those like weird little uh flourishes so like these guys right here um if you, I didn't even know what they were called. Flourish was literally the only word I could think of. And in the chat, you guys actually might have seen them before. Um, or you might th think of a different word and there actually may be even more. I just couldn't even think of it. But um, yeah, there's ton, tons of these in there. And so I feel like these show up on lots of different, especially sign designs, um, especially ones I see on Etsy. I feel like there's a lot of these kind of like um, accent pieces that are float, floating around. But I, there's a ton, and I forget which one I actually picked. So if you guys have it open, I would just copy and paste the one that's in there. Uh, that is actually what I think I'm gonna do. Yeah, because I'm not gonna be able. Oh, this is this is it right here. So um, this is the one, and then I hit fill, and I brought it over here. And so I wanted the exact opposite. So again, I'm uh, clicking the whole thing. And actually, this one's a good example of what I was talking about before with the pro design, how these are separate. So uh, you can see you can actually individually move these. So the way the designer created that design, they didn't um, like combine all that together. So you do or you are able to move them individually. Now, you may not want that. Um, I mean, you can always select it and move the whole thing, but maybe you just like, I just want to combine it together. Um, I don't need everything else. Select the whole thing, right click, and hit combine. Also, Command J or Control J is the uh, the keyboard shortcut. And now you can see these are our one thing. But I don't think. Let me see. Can you edit undo that? Okay, you can undo the combine, but eventually you're gonna lose the um, like the undo the number of undos you can do. So that's why we suggest if that's something you um, want to keep, um, just to like copy this, paste it, and just keep this somewhere then do the combine. So you can always come back to that original one later, especially if it's like artwork that you're, like things you're editing that you're creating. So not necessarily the stuff you're bringing in. But I know I don't need it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it. All right, so now I'm gonna Command C, Command V. We are going to reflect this along the horizontal. And we're gonna go this way. And again, in a minute, we'll go back in here and we will make everything uh, aligned up. Okay, so the last thing that we need to do uh, for the, the, the design piece are these four clovers. And these are uh, this guy. Actually, I'll go ahead and copy both of these because we'll need them. Command C, Command V. And I'm going to make this guy bigger because the idea was you kind of have this whole piece and this whole piece are together, and or this, this is together. And then um, this, all of this kind of lines up with the big graphic. So um, these guys, uh, you can select, I think you can select, yeah, you can select them both. Come over here to the cut menu. Yours might be on shape. So click cut. And then the cut path, uh, you can do whatever you want. I think this one I just did on the shape path because it really didn't matter. And then this one is going to be dependent on the depth. So since we're using a V-carve bit, the deeper you go, the more that you get the angle of that V-carve um, like going into the wood. So um, you can adjust this depth to really get kind of the effect that you want. So this is where 
the detail preview comes in handy so you can kind of see what it's going to look like. And I have always found that the depths I put always will look deeper in real life than what I think they are, even in the designer. So, um, yeah, so I would always, if, you, if you're not sure if something's going to look super weird or super deep, I'd always go on the shorter end because you can always just leave your, um, your piece still attached to the CNC and just carve it deeper. So you can't do it the other way. All right. And we are doing, I think, four of these. So I'm going to make these a little bit bigger. And I'm going to bring them together. And then I'm going to copy and paste this one. I think it pasted. No, it didn't. I'm going to scale it down. And then I am going to copy and paste that one. I grab it there it is and reflect it cool and in just one second we'll go and get all this lined up all right so i'm going to move all this kind of down here and i'm gonna grab some water real quick and check the the chat so let me see if any questions that you guys have got okay actually going back to the red preview stuff uh papa was saying he does have the beta but that is not open yet so um so yeah so that, that may not be uh showing up for you guys also on facebook i just saw i think there's a question um oh you guys are just saying you can see it yeah let me know if you guys have any questions in general um hopefully this is a pretty easy design and hopefully most of this makes um sense but we really wanted to show off um you can kind of build a design from scratch inside of easel um instead of just having to import an SVG from from somewhere else. So either one you bought or um, one you made um, in something like um, Inkscape or Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so where are we? Uh, so let's go ahead and um, get this design, kind of get everything spaced. So the first thing I want to do is I want to um, get these pretty close. And what I'm actually going to do is I am going to turn these uh, the text actually into objects. Sorry, I'm gonna cough again. And so um, right now you can see like if I center this, uh, actually, yeah, let me put this, let's say I wanted to put luck, like the this part of luck right at the top. So right there at eight inches. If I did the shape, and if you guys didn't know the position menu is super handy, we're about to use this a lot. And you would think if I did zero, or not zero, if I did um, uh, eight on the Y, yeah, that you would get there, or you'd get the, the top of the L, the top left of the L at the eight, but actually you're getting um, the a portion of the actual box. So what you need to do is you turn these into basically like objects, just like uh, the rest of these are. And so um, one thing with that is you no longer will be able to edit the text. So like right now you could click in here and you can edit it. So uh, like we're talking about, I'm just gonna copy and paste this because this is going to be destructive. And uh, the way uh, I do it is actually with a app. And so I am coming over to the Exploder app. And oh, this, this does make a copy for me, I forgot about. Um, this is going to basically create like a vector version of all your letters. So now you can see the luck is uh, you actually have like the control points and stuff if I zoom in the right way. And so like you could uh, make that K look super weird if you wanted to. So um, actually I can delete this because I've got it all. So we're going to do that. And then I am going to right click and hit combine because I just want all of this one, one piece. Now, actually, let me see if this does do this. If we set our Y to zero. Yeah, so now you can see that um, the top is lined up to the actual graphic, not um, kind of the space around the box. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see, uh, we got a question from Abel Ramirez is asking, how do you select two or more vector on at the same time? So uh, I'm, I think you mean this. So like if we wanted to select a clover 
in the other clover, um, you just hold, sorry, I'm, I was doing this, uh, I need to do the, the keyboard stuff. Um, you select it, you hold shift, you select it, and then you can move both of these together. Or uh, you can click and drag and you get this like selection box. And actually I drag too much. And then you grab both at the same time. Now you could also be asking, and this is a good question, I think you can, if you can select multiple like vector points. So let me scoot over. I think if you hold shift, no. Yeah, I don't think you can select multiple vectors. Yeah, because when you hold shift, it's going to turn this into like a curve. Um, unless I am forgetting something. Yeah, so you got you to gotta adjust those um, individually. So sorry, that might have been what you were asking. I'm not sure. Um, cool. All right, so we're going to do the same thing with uh, the rest of this. I'm actually going to see if I can do both of these at the same time. So I'm selecting of the and Irish. Going back to that Exploder app, which is here. And we're going to import. Um, you can see you can also do a gap, um, but I'm not because I want the spacing to say the same. So now these are individual. I'm going to select all of, of, and the. Right click, hit combine, and the same for the Irish. Right click, hit combine. Cool. So now um, we've got all of these together. And the big reason I was doing all of this was so if I selected everything, I could use my align menu. I'm going to hit this because I want everything to be lined up on the left side. Now there. I'm trying to remember, there might be spacing. I think this works. Let me double check. Um, yeah, so uh, the big reason I was doing that is so I could do equal spacing. So just like like the uh, the space around it probably had the margins in the actual text. I'm sorry guys, this is still on, still on the screen. Um, and let me make this bigger so I can see that next time. So, um, yeah, so I made these all individuals. I haven't combined these together yet because uh, eventually we're going to have this as one thing. So if you select it all, come over to this app and then hit spacing, which is right, we just had it pulled up, equal spacing. You can space these together. So uh, I want to do, I believe, yeah, vertical spacing um, on center. So it's going to be spaced off of, of the, and then you can see if you adjust this, they're going to be bigger and smaller. Now I like it, so let's go. And actually, let me see what this does. Okay, so you can either do it um, with like adding additional spacing to what's already there, or you can do specific spacing if you know a specific dimension. But in my case, I think zero actually works. Um, yeah, and that's equal. So then you know the distance between look and the top or the bottom of U and the top of O is the same as the bottom of the F and the top of the I. Now, you might want it to be spaced off of the V. If that's if that's the case, you would kind of have to manually move things around, but this is pretty good for working with uh, most text. Okay, so we're gonna bring that in and it adjusts uh, what we already had in there, so that's good. So you can see right now, this is actually cutting through the entire thing. We don't want that. Um, we'll adjust how far everything is in a minute, but I think I'm gonna keep it all at an eighth. Uh, if you guys didn't know on the cut menu, so you can click and drag, but you can also uh, adjust the depth right here by typing it in, but you can also just click uh, the, it goes by eighth of an inch in um, Imperial, and then in metric, you can do it by every two millimeters. So at an eighth, cool. Now, yeah, I could combine all this together. I'm actually just going to keep it like this for now, but uh, I can still adjust this whole thing as one big shape. So I do know I want this to be centered on our workpiece. Oh, and I didn't set it up. So uh, we're doing a 12 by 8 workpiece, and um, we'll cut out the border. Uh, like, it'll still be a maximum height of um, 12 by 8, or maximum height of um, 8 inches in a minute. So I do know that I want this centered on the piece. So since this is 8 inches tall, I know if I make this four, then now this is exactly centered on the piece. Now this guy is, this is gonna be more of an eyeball because we don't really want it centered here because I actually like that it is dropping down. Um, now I could, 
let's see. I could line the top of his hat up with the top of luck. And so the top of the hat is, uh, so you could do it like this. Let's see if this moves. Okay, this moves the second piece. I believe, let's see. I'm trying to remember which way you do it. Okay, it's gonna move it each time. So what you would, uh, what you would probably do is combine all of this together, and then you could line both of these up. Um, or you can see that luck is at uh, 5.6. So if I set the top of this to 5.6, um, those should line up. If you want to do it that way, but I'm gonna kind of eyeball it. And I'm gonna say that I want it kind of like right here. Now um, with this guy, again, um, I'm gonna kind of squish these together. Um, we're going to also do the equal spacing. So I'm going to select all of them, come back over here. Uh, sorry, um, come back over to the... Equal spacing. And then we want it to be horizontal. Um, and actually, we don't want to like that because that's going to give us the big spacing in the middle of the clovers. So let me... Combine these together first. So I'm going to select both of them. I want to make sure they are lined up. And so I, I align them to the bottom. Right click, hit combine. And now, if I select all of that, uh, this should work a little bit better. Uh, yeah, Let's, oh, I want to go horizontal. And then we don't want a ton of spacing. We'll go something like this and then import. And then we are good. Uh, all right, so I'm going to select the whole thing. And now I want to make sure that it is centered along the x-axis. So this time we're going to go with six. And uh, we are good. Um, and I'm going to drop it down just a little bit. We'll go just right at seven inches for now. Um, cool. Sorry, I was just checking the comments. Okay, so uh, next one up is we're going to do this one, the same process as before. I'm going to line them up first, and then I'm going to do um, equal spacing. And we are going to do additional spacing of zero. Oh, sorry, do it horizontal. And additional spacing of uh, something like that. And actually, we'll probably adjust it because those are further out um, then I am wanting actually that's not bad we'll, we'll skip like that to keep it simple so uh, I actually am going to combine these elements now so again at this point um, I should have done this for this too is you would uh, make a new work piece but in my case I am just gonna go ahead and do all this so I'm gonna right click combine right click combine because basically I just want to treat all of these as like big design elements. Like you got one, two, three, really four things that are making up this whole design. This guy's already centered. This guy is also already centered. Um, I wanted to have the gap between the top of this clover and the bottom of this clover to be the same. So to do that, again, you can check the position. So this is uh, at nine, or sorry, it's at 7.3 three off the top. So if I set this to like 7.3, that really means it's um, or 0.7 inches from the top. That's the, the margin. So uh, because it was eight inches. So if I do this, I select the bottom and then I do 0.3. Uh, that should give me the same. I might be looking at this wrong there. Uh, let me check something real quick. Oh, sorry. That's uh, it was it was 0.7 inches. I was <laughs> I was doing math wrong. Okay, so this should be 0.7. And we went with the bottom. 0.7. Cool. So that spacing is the same, and actually that's a little too tight. So we're gonna make this more of um, we'll do seven. We'll just do like half an inch, maybe margin around the sides. Okay, uh, we got a question, let's see. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, you're right, Nelson. It was to align the head with the text. Uh, look, yeah, yeah, so you would select the, the head. Yeah, you're right. Um, cool. All right, so Lonnie Thomas is asking, what is the advantage of combining? Okay, Lonnie, a couple things. I'm going to clear this so it helps. I'm actually going to open up a different work piece. Uh, it'll be a little bit easier to explain. So simply, this is like what a combine does. Let me turn the v-carve off. So we just have an eighth inch bit just so this visual preview looks a little bit better. So right now, I think the tool paths, yeah. So when it generates the tool path, it's still gonna treat these as two separate squares, but I believe if you combine them together, so again, selecting both, hit combine, um, simulate, I still do the same thing. Okay, so actually, so not that, the, the main advantage is it helps clean up your, um, your design. So especially if you're moving things around, like you might accidentally select this, or you can imagine if you had a ton of different pieces, having these still combined together would be helpful. So you can either combine things that don't actually overlap like this. And so then you can move them around pretty easy, but, uh, or, and then you can always go back here and you can use the Exploder app if they have space between them. So you can see, then I can bring these back, even though they're combined, and now these are separate. But if we delete that, and um, actually, I do want this. But if we put these together, hit combine. Um, if I do exploder, nothing is going to happen. So that's why I say always make sure, um, like even if I do a gap of five inches, nothing's going to happen. You're going to get the same thing. So really it's kind of to help cl to clean up your workflow. And I think with like more complex designs, when you combine them together, it also helps clear up the vectors. And it's gonna help you improve your cut settings. But it's more of a, um, a just an aid when you're moving pieces around. Um, to, you can just kind of grab one thing and move it and do the alignment and all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna delete this work piece because we don't need it. So hopefully that helps. Again, if you guys have questions, uh, let me know. All right, so. Now, um, I think this is looking pretty good. Now, I am gonna pump this up a little bit so it fills in more of that gap. And we're gonna get something kind of like this. And if I scoot this over, you guys can see. And actually, uh, Lonnie, what we're about to do um, is going to be a good reason for where, why you would want to combine, um, how we're going to make the shape to cut this thing out. So I actually forgot about that. All right, I'm going to hit generate preview, which you guys can't see because that's where my little screen is, but it's at the bottom right. And then you guys can kind of see this is what we are working with. And if you guys didn't know, so with the way the V carving works, um, some V carving software, um, if you do like a depth of, uh, so like with luck, if we do a depth of like all the way down, then, um, or sorry, if we go if we do go real short, um, it wouldn't give you the full width that you're looking for. So let me hit this. But uh, with ours, it gives you that flat bottom, um, which normally is what you're looking for. So, like if you only wanted to go down 0 0.04 inches or 0 0.05 inches, um, then you still get the full like width of the text, so you still get the design look that you want you have that flat bottom so normally that's kind of what you are are going for cool so now let's go ahead and we're gonna do one more work piece and I'm actually or we're gonna do one more thing but we're gonna do it on this design let me move this out of the way so now um, we're basically gonna create uh, this guy and so this is again if you guys are coming in later um, this is just us cutting out uh, the sign doing a, a quick design for it so to make that, sorry, I'm gonna cough again. Audio still on? Yep, okay. Um, uh, to make this, actually I'm gonna do a workpiece. I'll make it easier. I'm gonna do a square. No, that, that is why I did on the other one, so I can see where it's gonna line up. Okay, we're gonna do a square. Also, uh, let me show you this. Uh, so I'm about to move things on top of other things. 
and there could be a chance where like I try to select this, but I accidentally click something underneath. Then I adjust stuff that I don't want to adjust. So I'm gonna select everything. And first off, I'm gonna set everything to eighth of an inch. But then also, if you guys didn't know, under the shape menu, um, there's this little thumb tack, and that's going to pin it to your design, meaning you can still select it. So like you can still select it and adjust um, these settings, but you can't move it. So I'm trying, like I'm clicking it and holding it and trying to move not going anywhere. If you guys don't have that, I think that's under advanced. Um, yeah, enable uh, pinning shapes. So that's under your machine settings, advanced, enable pinning shapes. And it's got a little description of what it does. Also, uh, this is super new. If you guys didn't know, this is actually, I don't think this is released yet, but uh, the uh, the safety heights uh, are, you're going to be able to adjust basically the height uh, that your uh, machine like goes over. Um, the clamps and stuff, and then the safety height just in general for the cuts. So this is going to be able something that you're going to be able to speed up your cuts, but we'll have a lot more information about that for you in the future. But if you saw that and you're wondering what it was. Okay, so I am going to make this square exactly eight inches. So I want the uh, height to be eight because I want it to take up the whole thing. And then I want uh, the bottom to be on zero for the Y. I, uh, let's see. I do want to make it bigger. Uh, see, so probably something about like that. And then I want to center it. So I'm going to select the center point and then make sure I am on the X, which needs to be at six. Uh, now this is centered. The next thing is we need to add the curves to the sides. So I'm going to do a circle and um, you can actually click and drag. If you're not doing it from the corners, um, you can make it. So it doesn't stay proportional, which is what I want because I want to make it a little elongated and I'm going to pull it out and then uh, I think I just moved this guy yeah and then I'm going to make that bigger so we get something something kind of like this I'm actually going to make this uh, bigger I'm going to go all the way up to 9.75 um, Cool. And you can see it's, it kept that, I think it did, no, I had moved it earlier, but it should keep that position um, and it'll expand it like in both directions. Okay. So this guy, we want it to be centered on the uh, Y axis. So this is at four. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. So I'm going to hit control C, control V. And we want it to be, also we want this to be at zero on the X. So that means it's right at the edge. So same thing over here, except we want uh, this corner to be at 12 on the X. And then we want, um, I think that's it. Oh, we want, we want it to be centered on the Y, which it already is. Cool. So now um, this is why you would want to do a combine. Now, if I select the whole thing, we don't want to cut this whole piece out, right? We would just want to do the outline. So if I flip this over to a cut that is a, a cut on the outside of the shape, because I do want to preserve the inside of that. Um, now, if I try to cut this out, we still have the circles and stuff underneath. So this, and also I did it to everything else too, because you can adjust the bottom with the cut settings. Um, let me actually control Z that. So what I'm going to do is select all of this. So I'm not clicking and dragging, so I don't get anything underneath. Um, actually, I'm gonna double check. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. And then I will recenter this in a minute. Uh, actually, I'll just do it right now. Uh, yeah. Right click, hit combine. Now, outside of the path. Now you have just that outside line. So that is probably the best reason why you would want to do a combine. Now with that in there. Um, you know what, actually I'm gonna do on the other side, even though this should be fine. I mean, you would just need to make sure your material is bigger um, or is like exactly at eight and you have ex everything exactly centered. I always like to get material just a little bit bigger than what the design is gonna be anyway. So then I can get basically the CNC to square everything off for me. So I don't have to cut all this on the table saw um, if I need to. So I'm actually gonna make um, the shape, uh, we'll make it a little bit smaller. No, no, sorry. We're going to do the cut on the inside of the path. Um, then we're going to adjust the design on the inside. Now, 
I'm clicking it. Now I'm gonna pin this, and then I'm gonna select everything else. I'm hitting shift, because I'm trying to unselect, uh, I still want the other thing pinned, and then unpinning everything else. So I shouldn't, yeah, that should be stuck. Cool, so now I am going to adjust this stuff. Uh, making sure positions are staying the same. I'm gonna bring this over a little bit. And actually this guy's a little bit too small, or too big. Again, these clovers, I think that's going too deep. We're gonna go up a little bit higher. And then I'm gonna double check I had that, uh, what was it? Um, this was, yeah, 0.5, which still is. Okay, I'm kinda gonna center it. Yeah, I'll do something like that. Okay, so that's pretty much the whole design, uh, except this uh, is gonna go all the way through. But um, since this is a double, uh, so th since you have a detail bit, it's going to cut it out with a V-carve bit, so that's why it's super thick. So I was keeping it pretty thin, but you can see that's going, the thickness of that line is going to adjust depending on the V-carve. So at this point, what I did is basically, this is like my master. I've got all the design stuff in there. Then from here, I'm gonna make um, two different work pieces, one for the cutout and then one for the internal design. So click, duplicate, and I'm gonna delete this. I didn't mean to do that. And then I am going to unpin this guy because it was still pinned. Delete, delete. And then this is just the design for uh, the two stages. So the eighth inch and then the 60 degree uh, V bit. It's going to simulate all the tool paths. Cool. So uh, then you can go in there, adjust your settings depending on your machine, uh, and you can speed it up or slow it down. Next, I'm going to duplicate the master one again, except this time, let me unpin this. Um, no, yeah, let me keep it pinned. Uh, select everything, delete, and I just want that outside because now I can delete the detail bit. And then uh, you can either do uh, a quarter, eighth, whatever you wanna do. I'll just keep this as an eighth inch because that's probably what most of you guys have. And I need to make sure my cut is going all the way down. And then also, if you guys didn't know, there's a little yellow guys, so those are tabs. Um, it's not gonna show up in your preview, but um, you can move them around. Um, I didn't even realize that for the longest. And then you can kind of put these wherever you want. I'll probably do something like this. And add more if you want, so you can always increase the quantity. It does equal spacing, but like but like you just saw, you can adjust it. And then you can make them longer if you want for whatever reason. So um, you can make it half an inch. And then the height is the height of the tab. So this is gonna cut out the full half inch of our material, but it's gonna leave 0 0.08 um, inches of material as your actual tab. But you can make that bigger or smaller depending on what you need. Cool, so that is, that. that's pretty much uh, the design. So you've got, like I said, uh, when you actually go to cut this out, you're gonna start with this. Uh, you're gonna do a roughing pass more than likely first, um, which if we, let me adjust the cut settings again. This, I'm gonna set up for, if I was using um, the XCar Pro, because these, uh, these speeds are gonna be a way quicker. Um, let me just put it in like 150. The plunge rate can be like 40. The depth of pass, um, the depth of pass, good rule of thumb again, is you don't go um, more than the width of your bit. So this is an eighth of an inch. So I'm actually gonna do it at an eighth of an inch. I'll keep the spindle speed the same. And then the feed rate for the V-carve, uh, also could be super fast, probably way faster than that. Also keep it at 40. And then um, this one can go deeper, but I'll, I'll just do it at, I'll do it the same. Um, Cause I think that's as deep as it's going in general. Uh, I don't need to do multiple passes with my V-carve. Um, and that's even something um, on other machines that maybe aren't like the full X-carve pro, even like the standard X-carve. More than likely with your V-carves, you don't need to do like multiple passes if you're not going super, super deep. So one way to speed up your carves is uh, to make sure to adjust that cut setting 
and uh, make it just like your maximum depth of your cut for your v-carve and that can help speed things up but as always with all machines always go, go conservative and then you can crank these settings up and down depending on how it performs now i'm going to simulate it i think it was like an hour and a half before and now you can see it's going to go way way quicker for this guy which takes up the majority yeah so 21 minutes still going to take a while because uh, it's got lots of ramps up and down that's another thing you guys are going to hear a lot more information about um, but we are getting um they've been working on uh, the easel team on the tool paths and optimizing them and so you're going to guys are going to get some speed bumps because you're going to get um some more optimized tool paths coming very soon and um you probably will see me on a video talking about it soon so uh, and then the last thing is we're doing um this guy so uh, again uh cut settings i would probably adjust this to like 150 or something um i'm just kind of pulling these out of nowhere um, the depth again is the max is going to be one eighth, but this one is going to take multiple passes. So this is what, uh, 0.5 divided by one eighth. So this is going to take four passes to go all the way through. Simulate this guy and it's still going to take like a minute because it's, it's, it's kind of cranking through there. But yeah, guys, so that would be the process. Do these two passes, then come back and do this. And then you would clean everything up. Um, one thing, and again, when we actually get into the shop and start doing the stuff for real, uh, we can get into like, if you wanted to paint this, so like, let's say you wanted everything to be black, um, or even you wanted, um, yeah, let's just, let's just say you wanted everything to be black. The process I've used is you use something, you mask uh, the top. So let, like, let's say you have, um, uh, pine and you want to make it dark. So you can do, you can like stain your wood, you make it dark, start off with that come back and do some type of mask either use really big uh, painters tape or what a lot of people use and this is what I really like it's expensive though but if you're selling stuff it works it's called aura mask um, and it does a really good job uh, you uh, usually they come in like 12 inch rolls but you can do wider I think and they they're long um, but yeah you would mask the entire thing cut everything out then you'd come back and you could either paint or spray paint whatever colors you want um, so you could even uh, like mask it again, like just either put a piece of cardboard over if you wanted the sky green, paint everything, then peel the mask off, and then you could put a clear coat on it as well. Also, some people will do clear coats before you either stain or before you paint. Sometimes that helps depending on what you're working with, especially like MDF. It's really helpful to um, seal the MDF first before you paint it or it's just going to suck up tons of paint but we'll get into like sign finishing and all that kind of stuff um, once we actually get into the shop which should be next week even though i said that's the past two weeks all right i'm going to switch back over that was lots of talking hopefully we haven't had any other audio issues i think the the chat's been good um i'm going to check let's make sure the comments are on okay what questions we got lonnie thank you you are welcome lonnie uh, Nelson is asking, does the XR Pro will have automatic change of bits while doing the cuts? Nelson, great question. Yeah, so it doesn't have a automatic tool change ability currently. And if you guys didn't know, um, basically what that means is you'll have like collets that are set up um, with the machine. And then it's programmed to basically go in and grab the collet and then drop down. And then you put a different bit in each collet. And then you can tell it what size bit you have in each collet. So for something like this, you could do you could basically hit start and it would cut the whole thing for you with three different passes but yeah currently nextcar pro does not have that uh abel when i save g card g code how do i make it work on a shape poco good question so let me I'm not totally sure on the shape poco side but i believe what you would need to do um i'm trying to remember i think you download the zip of this uh, I'm trying to remember what this actually saves as. Now the import side, I can definitely help you with. Uh, the export's gonna be a little bit different um, because you could actually just control your machine directly. Okay, yeah, yeah. So um, if you guys didn't know, you can um, export or download the whole thing as a zip file. Sorry, I'm gonna cough again. Once you do that, also you can just see all these like songs I just downloaded um, that you guys are listening to. Uh, you're going to get SVGs. So these are the vectors, and these are the vector files on each of these workpieces. So you're getting vectors for each workpiece. I think it saves it as like one big vector. Yeah. 
So you guys can see uh, you have this whole piece. And so like if you open that up into something like Adobe Illustrator, you could see it, but you could then import those into, I think it's Carbide Create is what they use to control it. Or um, probably the easiest is you could just connect your shape code directly to Easel. So you can set up machines that aren't an XCARF. Um, you guys can see other Gerbil would be an option. Um, actually, Shapeoko 1 or 2 is already in there because they were part of um, Invincibles at one point. XCar Pro, you probably, guys probably don't see that because I think that's just if you have an XCar Pro. But yeah, you can set up another machine, um, put in the sizes, all that kind of stuff, and then you can still do the feeds and speeds dependent on your machine. So that is how you do that. Either you would bring it into their software with the SVGs or just connect it directly, which honestly is probably going to be easier. Okay, Derek, this <laughs> we get this question a lot. This is something we this is something we need we need to help out with. Uh, and actually, there is some stuff that is set up for you. So, Derek is asking, uh, and you know what? You guys couldn't see anything I was just doing, did you? No, I didn't have the screen up. Okay, sorry. Let me let me pull this up real quick, Derek. I'm gonna come back to your question. Sorry. Um, so this is going back to the GCO question. So, uh, if you guys uh, come over to file download zip. That's what I had just done. Sorry, not showing you guys, but you can see it. And then let me open this up. All of these are SVGs. So these are SVGs, one big SVG for every single workpiece. And then you can go in and like I said, either import it into Carbide Create as an SVG or just control your machine directly because uh, you can set up another, you can actually set up a shape echo um, if it's not a one or two as an other gerbil and then put in the work area and then you're good to go and it can control it. So yeah, sorry, I um, didn't have that pulled up. Okay, uh, Derek, can you recommend a good page to do bit settings? Okay, so Derek, one thing is, I'm gonna switch over. If you use bits from Invenables, um, these cut settings are gonna be uh, like conservative recommendations. And so you can always ramp those up. And so um, what's hard is like, even if you have the same machine, it could be different for um, different people, just depending on if like your belts are tightened, um, if you have everything like locked in, or maybe it might be a little bit loose. So really what we normally suggest is you run it with kind of the recommended settings first. And even like if you, you put in like a custom eighth inch bit, like just select one of these, like uh, one of the ones that are stock, and it's going to give you automatic uh, settings, which actually, yeah, sorry, this is a custom setting. So yours, is, that's going to be actually a lot slower. Um, it should be. I want to say it's like 30 or 40 um, inches per minute with the ramps and everything. So you can do that. And then while it's cutting, which I've showed you guys in the past, I'm trying to see if I can, I don't know, I can't cut, turn mine on. But um, if it was running, um, you're going to get a plus and a minus right here. And then you can go all the way up to double the speed that you started out. And so then you can just kind of ramp up the speed until you either hear it starting to um, like get really choppy or it just doesn't sound right. Um, and then you know, okay, I need to back it off a little bit. Or the cut looks really bad too. So that's one way. Uh, the V-carve stuff especially, you can probably crank higher than the, the conservative recommendations. Um, but I know in the chat people will put out their uh, like rules of thumb, but um, I mean, I usually don't go over 100 on the X-carve, just in general, 100 inches per minute. Um, and that's, what is that in? Uh, millimeters per minute, yeah. So um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I do. But X-carve Pro, we are working on uh, specifics because your feed rate not only is dependent on the bits that you're using, the material, the... Um, the speed, but also, uh, sorry, your inches per minute, but also the spindle rate as well. And with XCar Pro, you can actually define your spindle speed. And so you really can dial in your settings um, dependent on the bit. And so um, we're going to give you guys lots of recommendations for XCar Pro off of testing that's actually happening right now on uh, different combinations, kind of like easel, but it'll be more on uh, more dot in because you can control your spindle speed. And that's something, if you guys didn't know, that uh, just with the normal um, DeWalt as well as uh, Makita routers, you always want to keep them pretty much all the way at the lowest setting because um, with most bits, actually the RPMs, like the recommended RPMs, 
um, are going to be lower than what they can actually do to get the best chip load. And basically all the chip load is like the amount of material you'll remove per, um, like per cutting flute. And that's the way that it's measured. But so keep it low, but because uh, if you're using like a spindle that you do have control over, um, it's a combination of spindle speed, your inches per minute, as well as a bunch of other things, but yeah. And to end, um, your chip load. But yeah, there's lots of good rules of thumb. Um, let's see, thank you. Derek White, 30 something. Um, if you guys do want a good uh, feeds and speeds, if you guys want kind of an overview of this, if you guys will drop this in the chat, I think we've talked about this before, but um, this is uh, just an article that gives you an overview of feeds and speeds. And I'm trying to think if we give, yeah, and also like it's gonna be dependent on the thickness of your wood. You can calculate your feed rate. But again, your feed rate is your, your spindle speed times your, your chip load times the number of your flutes. And the chip load is going to be dependent on the type of bit you're using and the material that it's cutting. And most of the time, the bit manufacturers will give you that number. So you can work backwards to get your feed rate. Your recommended feed rate. But again, it's going to kind of be dependent on your machine too. Um, let me switch back over. Cool. So the answer is sort of. But it, yeah, it's, uh, it's as clear as mud, right? All right. Um, cool guys. Well, that is, uh, I think that's going to be it. So that's everything that we, um, we're planning on doing today again next week. As always, the plan is to be in uh, the actual shop. There's, I got to get like a little adapter for the, the actual computer that has an ethernet cable. That's the, that's the big thing I need to do. Then we can be in there and we'll be cutting stuff out. Um, and tell you what, actually next week we'll do a, um, if you guys are interested, I've got a 750 millimeter X carve currently in my shop, an older one. You guys probably have a thousand if you have an X carve. Um, and also, I have a early version of the X carve Pro. Uh, if you guys have seen, let me actually throw that video up. If you're interested, I'm just going to plug all the stuff that we've been doing. Make sure I'm in the right account. I am. Uh, Let me grab this guy. If you guys want to check it out, it's in our YouTube channel. But um, if you're interested, um, this is kind of a walk around of the XCarve Pro. And uh, we can uh, get that for you here. And I'll pull this up so you can see it on screen. Uh, so yeah, there's my super messy shop. That's where we'll be in. But anyway, yeah, this, this will walk you through uh, the XCarve Pro, a bunch of different features, all that kind of stuff. Um, cool guys. And so we'll probably do something general like that. And then we can work through some basics, uh, moving forward of like actual physical setups, doing different things. So, um, cool everybody. I hope everything is going well. Oh, Derek just mentioned, yeah, one is like 16,000 RPM. There is a chart out there that has that, uh, hold up. I might be able to find that real quick. DeWalt router. Uh, I'll have to find it. Uh, I'll, I'll have to link it later. Sorry. Um, yeah, but th there is a chart out there that, that lists it. So, well, thank you guys so much for hanging out. It's a blast as always uh, to see you guys. And uh, we will chat with you next week. All right. See you guys.